Hi, it's Peter Rossi again to talk with you a little bit about graphics in R. The topic of graphics in R is a really vast topic as there are many graphical features built into the base R as well as into uh, R contributed packages. In this uh, video, I'm just going to talk about the capabilities, some of the capabilities in the base R. Um, the philosophy of R in almost all of the graphics packages is to construct graphs um, in a layered approach, that is to build up the graph, to sort of like paint the points on the graph, paint the labels on the axes, paint the title, paint a legend, and so on, um, to build up a graph um, from its constituent uh, elements. Okay, so let's try some simple graphs. Some of those are, these are already illustrated in the class notes, but just to quickly review them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach the um, flat panel TV uh, set because I just don't want to constantly type in the long form of these names. So let's first do a histogram, which we did in class, of the price variable. Okay, and you can see this rather, as we said in class, a little bit of an ugly plot, which says it has a price. Um, the the x-axis is uh, with price frequency is given here. There are various options. For example, if you say histogram uh, breaks equals uh, twenty, you'll create more um, bars at the in the chart and so on. Those that's a an option for histogram. But there are general graphics options in R. That is to say. Uh, parameters that apply to all graphics or virtually all graphics. So one of them would be to color the histogram. We did this in class. Color and you can type out color or just take col equals and I like magenta. Well, let's let's do blue um, here and this creates a blue bar chart. Um, now you might say and now that I have this chart here in in our studio I can export it save the plot as an image or save it as a PDF file. Um, I can also go backwards with these arrows to see earlier plots. Okay, um, now one thing I don't like about this plot uh, is that it says histogram of price. I think it's pretty obvious what it is. Uh, it is a histogram and we know what it's a histogram of. So one thing I could do is just say histogram of price color equals blue and tell it please don't do anything on the uh, the title, so let's main is the parameter for title, so let's just equal to um, nothing, and it will take the histogram off of it. Um, frequency uh, on the uh, on the y or vertical axis is also a bit redundant, right? So in other words, of course it's a count or frequency, so it says that there are ten prices between what is this zero and five five hundred dollars? Excuse me, about excuse me, about two of them. There's something like a little over 20 between say 500 and 1000 and so on. So um, I don't think it's, I think it's quite clear it is a frequency. So histogram price color equals blue. And then let's just tell it that the Y label, the label for the Y, y is the vertical axis, X is the horizontal axis. Let's just tell it, don't put any label at all on the Y axis. Let's say, or let's change the label to counts. And oops, I forgot to tell it. It's the Y lab equals counts. Okay, and now you can see I've replaced uh, frequency with the old plot with the new plot, which is counts. Of course, I could do the double the quotes with nothing in between and remove that label. Okay, so those are how to set the. You can do the same thing for the X lab. So there's X lab and Y lab and color. Those are options we've gone over as well as main. You can change the main to anything you'd like. Another useful thing is to specify the, the limits on the axes. So one thing I could do, for example, is say x lim, so that's the limit on the x-axis, and, and say I want, when you draw the plot, draw the plot all the way from say 0 to say 10,000. And what that will do is you can see the histogram has been shunted over here where the range of the actual data is and shows you from 0 to 10,000. You can do the same thing with the y-axis because by default almost all graphics blow up the plot area to include the range of the data. Okay, so I think that pretty much takes care of some of the options uh, in the histogram. Let's go do a plot of 
of two variables like we did in class size versus price. And by default, this will give you a plot of, of, um, of uh, size on the horizontal or x-axis and, and, and price on the vertical axis. You can see that the plotting points are these little circles or little O's. That's a default plotting character. I might want to use something a little jazzier, like a solid circle. There's a whole range of, of characters available. So if I say, for example, plot 1 through 25, um, plotting character equals 1 through 25, It'll, you'll see all of these little shapes from the 0, which is plotting character 1, to 20, which is a solid dot, which is a small solid dot, 19 is a little larger solid dot, and so on and so forth. I, it's hard for me to see those on this video, so let me blow up the size of the plotting character by using another parameter called CEX equals 2. So, so the default is 1, so when you say CX equals 2, you're saying twice the normal size and now the characters are a little more visible. So I like to say, use the PCH of 20. So let's plot size, price, PCH equals 20. Um, and I like the color of blue. And now we have a nicer plot of price versus size. And there, notice there is, by default, no title. So let's put a title on there. We can always do that by saying, uh, title, and um, this is a scatter plot. And you see that it just painted a title on the current plot. So that's the idea of building up a plot. So now I've got a title on the plot. Let's of course, let's uh, let's actually plot this uh, on um, the standard coordinate system. So let's go up to plot and let's plot it with xlim equals c 0 to say 70 and ylim which is the range of prices ylim equals c uh, say 0 to uh, 4000 and now you can see the points are all shunted off over here where they should be and let's draw um, a line on this plot uh, using ab line so ab line says because, and we've done this in class, I won't bore everyone. I'm going to have an intercept of zero and a slope of, say, on the order of, um, let's say, 50 or so. And there's that line. Now, that line, by default, is in black, and it's a solid line. I can, of course, change the lines to various types. So there's something called LTY, which stands for line type. If I set two, the default is a dashed line. We can't quite see that actually because, of course, it's been painted over the old line. So let's put that on now. And there's a dashed line. And I like to fatten my lines a bit. So let's make LWD, which is the line width. And let's make that two or maybe even three. And now I've got a nice fat dotted line. Okay. Um, so that's AB line. So again, the idea of the philosophy here being to build up plots from their constituent parts and, and adjust things as needed. Okay, um, one other um, feature that you might want to, graphics function that you might want to utilize is a box plot. So we've done seen some box plots in chapter two in the class notes. So let's do some box plots. Now, what box plots are really only useful to compare distributions. So I have to have something to index or classify a continuous variable. So a box plot is designed to characterize a continuous distribution. Um, and it only really makes sense to have more than one. So let's, let's do a box plot of price by brand. So in other words, we'll do a distribution of price for the three different brands that are in this, um, in this data set. So let's say price. And then it has the same formula, like remember in the LM command. So price is what I want to take box plots of. And if you put a tilde brand, what that will do is say, Brand has to be a categorical variable. I will do a separate box plot for each possible value of brand. And then let's remember, I like to color things a little bit. So let's, put, let, let's use green to fill in the box plots. And now we, we see three box plots, again, for the three brands. And I can directly compare their medians, their, their spread, and so forth. You can see this, for example, one Samsung model is 
dramatically more expensive than the others. Um, okay, uh, now uh, I could also, of course, put titles on this, box plots of price, and it would appear, and so on. Um, so that's a very useful command, a box plot command. You can do box plots of lots of different variables by a categorical variable. You can also have multiple categorical variables if you'd like. Okay, so that's a sort of a brief introduction to uh, the basics of graphics in R. And I will return uh, with a slightly more sophisticated uh, version of graphics, the ggplot2. Thank you.